All right, hello guys. How's it going? In today's video, we need to talk about the tropics because we have four separate systems out there right now. Some are bigger risks than other. Uh, we also have more waves that could potentially be on the way. We're also going to talk about the overall dust right now, how it's really going to recede heading towards uh, the time after the peak of the hurricane season, which is around right now in the next few days. Uh, which is going to lead to more activity and the warming Atlantic waters. We need to talk all about those things within this video. Now, before I get straight into things, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. For today's comment of the day, I would like to know which one of these systems do you think is the biggest threat to the United States? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video and first things first, we are taking a look here at the overall five day graphical tropical weather outlook. Obviously we have Larry, we've had Larry for over a week now, I'm pretty sure we have had Larry forever it feels like. We also have Mindy which did become a tropical storm, hence why it's Mindy. Uh, before hitting the Florida Panhandle. And in that video, the last time we talked about the tropics, I said, hey, look, it's very, very unlikely that this one becomes a tropical storm. You know, I gave it like a 10% chance or under. And sure enough, it became a tropical storm. So that's kind of why I always kind of explore the possibilities of the worst case scenario and reveal that to you guys, because I obviously didn't get rid of the chance of it being a tropical storm. I said it's very unlikely, but these things just, you know, with the models we have available to us, with the current conditions we have available to us, it's still not good enough to be perfect. And at this point, um, we have to put all the options out there on the table. And that's why that's been my motto, motto with this channel is to make sure every option is on the table so you guys don't get caught off guard. Um, and yeah, I wish I was a little bit more aware of the possibility for that one to become a tropical storm looking back, but it did. Uh, and I guess the good news is that a tropical depression and a very weak tropical storm, the impacts aren't too different. You know, it's still uh, more of a nuisance storm uh, and such. Probably had a little bit more rainfall than anticipated there in Florida. But that one is about to break up. We do have our two areas of possible development. Let's point those ones out here. Uh, number one here in the Gulf, expected to head towards Texas, the coast of Texas there. That one has a 60% chance of development. So we're going to be watching that one very closely, obviously, because that's the most imminent United States threat. But I question if it's the biggest threat. Let's take a look at Mindy real quick in the cone forecast. We'll move on to that invest offshore of Africa in just a moment. Uh, this one is a kind of post-tropical cyclone at this point and should break up. We'll take a look at the satellite imagery in a minute, but really this one is at the tail end of its life at this point. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the cone forecast for Larry, and then we need to take a look at a snowfall forecast. We're going to take a look at that in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look at that cone forecast for Larry. And as you can see, this one is expected to remain a hurricane as it crosses over uh, Newfoundland there. And there is hurricane warnings up. They expect hurricane conditions to be likely, especially on the very eastern edge there of Newfoundland. So we're going to be watching for that possibility, obviously. And then a tropical storm as it moves towards Greenland and might even hit Greenland. This is where we need to start talking about snowfall. Let's take a look at this. A casual 124 inches of snowfall is possible there over Greenland. 124 inches of snowfall. I don't think it's very common that we see freezing temperatures kind of clash together with a tropical system. And that's why this one could be so potent up there in Greenland. Very, very interesting scenario. And our snowpack is going to be doing really good as we're taking a look at the next 10 days here, 240 hours. We see the west coast of Canada and a lot of Alaska there, northern Canada there as well. Uh, and then obviously now Greenland as well, building very nice snowpacks for the middle portion of September. This is looking good for late fall cold air to move into the United States. And also this will help moving towards the winter as well. Here's that also that other tropical disturbance that's going to be moving offshore of Africa. This one has a 70% chance of development over the next five days. This is another one combined with that one in the Gulf that could be a United States threat. We're going to need to watch this one very closely as this one is going to be developing, obviously around the peak of the hurricane season when conditions are expected to be the best. Here is the satellite imagery for uh, Hurricane Larry at this point. No eye anymore, but really, really potent looking storm. Here is our Mindy 
offshore of the East Coast. And as you can see, it is an area of scattered thunderstorms at this point. That is practically what it is at this point. And they're all over the ocean. So it doesn't really matter either way. Now we see that one, as we're taking a look here, the probability of tropical depression. We see Larry up there, obviously a 90 to 100% chance because it's probability of tropical depression and above. So there you go. We see our one offshore of Africa has a 90 to 100% chance, according to this European model, of developing at least to a tropical depression. We also see that that one heading towards Texas has a 70 to 80% chance of becoming at least a tropical depression. Now, as we move this towards day six through nine, which is going to be the 16th through the 19th of September, we have one offshore of the East Coast potentially developing. We have one heading towards the Southern Caribbean, and then we have another one moving offshore of Africa by that point. As we take a look at the tropical storm probabilities, we see we have a 40 to 50% chance with one of those down there heading towards the Southern Caribbean. And we even have a 10 to 20% chance of hurricane status, according to this model as well, for that same exact storm. Super interesting. Obviously, that means that's why I'm putting the tropics are exploding in the thumbnail because we're really getting towards the peak. There's reason, uh, really, there's reason to feel like it's going to start really picking up here. The dust is expected to really die down. The temperatures are increasing, uh, and we already have four disturbances out there with more potentially on the way that we see signs of. So, yes, this is getting really crazy right now. Uh, again, we keep going through these bursts of very crazy times in the tropics, and I think one of those bursts is coming up. Now, what we're going to do in a moment is move on and take a look at the spaghetti model guidance for a few of these systems. We'll take a look at the dust as well, and then the sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic also. All right, now here we are taking a look here at the spaghetti model guidance for Hurricane Larry. And as you can see, this one is expected to cross over Newfoundland, which is another one that I'm pretty proud of here because I called for maybe even like five days ago, I said, look, this one is probably going to track over Newfoundland. Uh, and that has stayed true. Uh, obviously, the spaghetti models were all over the place, forecasts were all over the place, but that stayed kind of my general thinking. I was obviously open to other ideas, but that was my most likely, um, you know, thought there is that it would cross over Newfoundland. And sure enough, that is likely at this point going to be the case. Now, we also see this one tracks very close to, to Greenland and even Iceland. Uh, and it really just stalls out, and that's why they're going to get so much snowfall from this one. Um, wouldn't you just love to be there for that? I mean, a tropical storm bringing 100-plus inches of snowfall, you don't see that very often. Let me put it that way. Here's the dust right now as we speak, and there's quite a bit of it. Uh, it's not everywhere. The Gulf doesn't have any. The Caribbean hardly has any except for the very eastern Caribbean. But there's a lot there in our main development region, which is the area in between Africa and the Caribbean, basically. So we can see there's plenty of that purple and gold. That is high amounts of dust. It's not everywhere, but there is high amounts. Now, by the time we move towards uh, Sunday, September 19th, obviously, this is a little bit of a long range outlook here on this model. So take it with a grain of salt. We see that it is just as widespread, but the potency dies down significantly. And I dare say that this amount right here that we see a tropical system could survive going straight through it at this point. So it, that's that's also another reason why I feel like the tropics are really going to begin to pick up because of this decreasing amount of dust that we potentially see moving forward. Also, sea surface temperatures. There's plenty of reds and oranges, a lot more of it than we see the blues. We see a little bit there in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, I would call it, and then some there for our main development region. But we see a lot more oranges and reds, and honestly, the reds are becoming more widespread than the blues at this point. They're developing. The blues are kind of dying down. So we're heading in the wrong direction here. And that's just another reason why I feel like the tropics are really, really blowing up right now and will be over the next week or two. For today's confidence tab, we're at a four out of six. I feel confident about a lot of what we talked about, but there's also those kind of more long range things we've taken a look at, which really decreases the confidence. For today's comment of the day, I picked James Marr again. I saw a lot of people complaining that I picked James Marr every single day, but I really went through every single comment on yesterday's video, and James Marr's the only person who directly answered the question I asked. If more people, you know, answered the question exactly how I asked it, I would be picking a lot of different people. But, it, you know, there's some days where there's only one person who really, really wants to be the comment of the day, and they really listen to what I'm asking, and they answer it exactly how I asked it. So if you want to be on the comment of the day, be sure to really pay attention to what I'm asking and give a very short but direct answer to what I am asking. But anyway, 
I asked if there would be any fall snowstorms in your opinion and James Marr said I believe there might be a few decently sized snowstorms in the fall time but no major ones you see how it's very very um to the point short I can't read a huge comment for the comment of the day obviously because it'd take like two minutes so that's why I pick shorter ones as well for today's patron highlight of the day I want to thank you all for supporting the channel but especially our platinum patrons John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lerla the Pan and Donna Carnes. Alongside our Diamond Patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Fallego, Gary, John Khaleesi, Dwight Phelan, and Steven Krenenthal. If you would like to be a part of this very exciting Patreon page and Patreon Ice Cream of the Day, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms 1, Catbite, Steven Fan, and Jeremy Cox. That's going to be next to the subscribe button down below if you are interested in joining this one as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.